on a one-way street when I get started on the other program, you can call in. The phone number here is 375-3082. I talk to a lot of you on the telephone during the week, and one of the reasons for doing the talk show that I thought would be interesting is that the questions that you have would be shared by other people on the air because if they interest you, they would interest other people. But there are a lot of uh, bashful persons out there. They'd rather speak one-to-one than be on the air. I don't know why it bothers them, but that's the way it is. But if you have the ability to share and get on the telephone and ask questions or uh, share information that you have or questions regarding the research, it's 375-3082. There aren't too many TV movies. I try to look in the TV guide on Monday to see what's of interest uh, uh, for us in the field of political assassinations or espionage. That's what the subject is that interests me, and I hope it interests you. There isn't too much. There's a program Wednesday night on laser weapons, the laser war and Ronald Reagan. That's uh, the high frontier. That's General Graham, who works in the office with Fritz Kramer, the German who discovered Henry Kissinger, and they're getting ready for laser weapons in Star Wars. The microphone is not behaving here. Okay, it's squeaking away. Uh, Maybe you'd like to talk about uh, the kinds of weapons that are being built. They just passed today, the Senate, the 100, I don't know the exact millions for new nerve gas. Even Richard Nixon couldn't get that one through, but Ronald Reagan did. Of course, he can blackmail them. This is a few years later, and he has more on members of Congress than Richard Nixon had as they accumulate these tapes and tales, and I think he twists a lot of risks to get the votes that he's getting. I'm very pessimistic about the way these things come around. There is a Years of Darkness, Thursday night at 10 o'clock on Channel 9, about a town that totally disappeared of Jewish citizens. It was in the Soviet Union, and when the Germans came, it was razed to the ground, Years of Darkness, and then there's a movie, 1130, um, on Thursday night also, Channel 5, this is on the Lindbergh kidnapping. There's a fellow here, Mr. DeMarco, who pitches in for his son, who puts on classical music here, and he was in the news business, he was a reporter, and told me that he attended the Lindbergh kidnapping, and uh, saw Bruno Hoffman and the testimony, and so forth, he sometimes uh, he does classical music here at the station. And uh, that's a fascinating subject because there's still controversy about who kidnapped the baby, was Bruno Hoffman guilty. And any movie, even if it's a one-sided movie, will give you certain dates or information to put it into a historical time slot, a frame of reference, so you can get a little better view of what was happening at that time. Hello? Oh, in Georgia, yes, I'm not sure if your question's getting there. Maybe it is. The oil executive, yes, from Chevron that was killed in Georgia. <laughs> Deb, I, you mean, have I solved that one yet? <laughs> have I solved the killing in Georgia? No, there was a more important, well, on a scale of 1 to 10, anyone that works for Chevron is important, and Chase Manhattan is important now uh, with their uh, links to John DeLorean and the loans they've made and the Henry Kissinger, proximity of Henry Kissinger's power to um, uh, Chase Manhattan and Chevron and Standard Oil. Um, many of these people I noticed in the past two years, if you listen to the program regularly, have been killed. I call them the millionaires that are being offed in Oklahoma and Florida and Los Angeles and New York and all over the country. It's kind of a new phenomenon that they're just getting swatted down like flies. Well, many of them have funded uh, particular people in espionage operations, and we never really know who these people are until the obituary comes out, and then we find out their relationships to other organizations and people. For example, this gentleman that was murdered in uh, Texas last week started a motion picture company called, uh, it was the four, where I have the, the name of it here, I was going to discuss this with you just briefly on the air, 
Later, uh, he started a motion picture company in Hollywood with David Niven and William Powell, and it, it was sort of an offshoot of the early Hollywood studios. His name was Henry Harrison Kyle, K-Y-L-E, the four-star production. And the people that he had on the board were Dick Powell and David Niven and Charles Boy and Ida Lupina. And David Niven, he's a multimillionaire from Texas who went out in Hollywood in the 70s and started this company. And David Niven died about three days later of his long cancer or disease. And Ida Lupina was the constant companion of Errol Flynn when he was in the Gestapo. And this fellow was in the Marines. He was high officer, very high officer in the service. And a lot of military people were coming to Hollywood to take over the original Jewish founders like Goldwyn and Cohn and Louis Mayer and the Warner Brothers. In other words, the studios began to be taken over by military. Uh, Joe Kennedy came out there and Howard Hughes and um, E. Howard Hunt was there. And it, it gradually, uh, the studios were, were became part of the espionage operation and part of a propaganda wing and made the stars are involved, and this fellow has an interesting history, and somebody emptied, emptied some bullets into his bedroom in Bel Air, uh, just at a time when uh, the espionage connections of some of his associates were breaking. Now, the fellow in um, Florida, I haven't seen the details. The best obituary is always the New York Times, and when they give him a going away, they tell you more than you ever knew when he was alive. Yeah. They're afraid of leaks and they're afraid of, of blackmail. If Florida is, uh, it, I don't know if it's a simple robbery or if they're silenced. The, the best uh, example of being leery is the study by Seymour Melman in Nazi Germany of the continuous series of murders around trials trying to get Hitler into power by the 30s, that there were Oh, he documents and wrote a book on, uh, Gumbel rather, wrote the book, and Melman published uh, articles about him. Gumbel was a professor at Frankfurt, and he noticed that there are approximately 400 suspicious murders going on in that time period in order to assure the election in 1933 of Hitler. And uh, he documented these. That book is not available anywhere. I've tried everywhere in used bookstores and tried to send for it. But Gumbel uh, documented uh, this very carefully. In fact, Albert Einstein was kicked out of Germany because he defended Gumbel's work, and he left Germany. And on the recent documentary of Einstein, they mentioned Gumbel in his studies and the relationship with the two. But uh, I noticed after John Kennedy was murdered, and that's when I began my research, that a cluster of people around him, it's now over 125, met what we call mysterious deaths, fast deaths, out of windows, throat cuts, karate chops, car accidents, and when the Kennedy case was opened up again, and I don't want to divert from the Florida thing because there's new things opening up now. The Bank of the Vatican has its back against the wall. Uh, in fact, there's an article I'll put on at 8 o'clock for the uh, World Watchers program, and they were caught with the head of the Bank of Vatican, Marcinkus, with the Bahama Bank right out of Miami, close to it, where close to Bibi Raboza and Richard Nixon and their dummy fronts in Panama. And they had president of the Banco Ambrosiona being killed, Roberta Calvi, and links to the Vatican Bank. And their money washing going out of Florida down to Central America, South America, particularly cocaine in Bolivia and Colombia. Uh, there's endless scandals piling up. Edwin Wilson in jail, Michael uh, Sindone in jail, the Vatican Bank, Edwin Wilson, who's tied into the Nugent Bank, which had to do with the Chase Manhattan and Henry Kissinger in Australia, where there's 55 million to a billion missing. And I could go on one evening on the broadcast. I'll summarize maybe those witnesses that are in jail now and what they would say if they could talk and how many millions. I haven't updated the missing millions for about six months. I often do have programs. The news has been so outrageous. I haven't had time to add up the missing floating millions and billions. And as a matter of fact, I heard coming over here today that Brazil can't pay their debt and Citicorp could go under. And without Wells Fargo, that there's so billions behind. And who have they given the money to, you see? So that the guy that was off, if he's linked to Chase Manhattan or Rockefeller Standard Oil, the major oil companies and corporations, whether it's ITT or IBM, they're used as covers for espionage, as are the studios. So we don't know what he knew. 
we don't know a thing about why he was off. And the best thing to do, like Gumbel did in Germany, is just add up how many of them and how they died. Well, you you don't have to make up your mind. Just sit back and watch. <laughs> Do you live in town here locally? How far away are you? Oh, well, maybe sometime call me and you can come to the house and I'll show you some of the books and files and so you can get an overview. You can't do much in one hour a week, but I these broadcasts are taped live off the air and they go to other stations and subscriptions all over the world. And all over the country to different people, and you simply cannot understand any subject in a few hours. It takes a constant effort of your part, you know, a consistent effort, and preferably to tape the broadcast so you can replay them when you read other stories so that you can, what you thought was outrageous tonight may seem old hat a year from now. See, and if you send me self-addressed stamped envelopes, what I do, I have a, a list of bibliography or source of information that goes with each broadcast and the listeners, um, well, what I do, <laughs> please, <laughs> I may send you some fleas for my cat. <laughs> you close an envelope, I'm afraid there's a flea in it. They're all over. No, I'm not going to do it. Now, what you do is I send you automatically, then each week, a source of information. Then you go look it up. Uh, people who really want to study the situation, and my sources aren't very radical. It's like U.S. News and World Report or Wall Street Journal or the London Times, you know, Washington Post, the things you can have access to. Yes. One reason or another, they're not associated with them. Um, how can, I, I just, I don't know, they're just the uh, bad guys and the good guys. I, Okay, you're saying, okay, now, some woman called me when I was doing a program in Los Angeles, and it's not a regular program, as I guess, for an hour, and uh, she was confused like you, because everything I was talking about involved conspiracy, and I wrote her a letter and said, well, the reason I was a guest on the program is that's what I study. I'm not doing, if you want me to do a program on the honest people, I'll cut out Every article there is on human interest story and decent people. Oh, we know and, they're there, though. Yeah, but the point is that, that uh, a doctor doesn't go to an AMA. Well, now they do go to talk about health or wellness, you know, as against sickness. But um, the honest people aren't the ones that are shit. Well, they shift the sands of uh, our history by doing nothing. What did Burke say? All it takes is ten good people to do nothing. You know, and you change the course of history. Well, you mentioned Einstein once before. He was a good person. He yes, he was a good person, and he spoke up, and he spoke up in 1948 against Begin in the New York Times. He said, "Never have a man like Menachem Begin ever get to power. He's a threat to the world peace, and and uh, he said he was a fascist. You know, uh, uh, he was trained with Mussolini's brown shirts. Yeah, there were some honest people, but what I I often bring out on the program the authors who are the good people who are trying to expose the corruption. And you can't, you know, like I wrote this lady, and I use the example often, you can't say that a surgeon is sadistic because when he works that he has to, you know, saw the head and get into the brains or cut the body and get the blood. And the only way you're going to cure a thing is just roll up your sleeves and get to work, and some of the work isn't very nice. Well... That's true. Um, I think your work is real nice, though, and uh, it is good to hear um, the in-depth uh, interviews that you give and uh, uh, comments that you put out. And yeah. In that one hour, I think you accomplished as much as any person could. Well, thanks. And what you do, if you really want to me to send you uh, sheets with the bibliography, just write to me, P.O. Box 22511. Carmel 939, you say, okay, like you're not going to do no, it. <laughs> okay, write to me, and I'll, I'll send you the sheets and study them. If you have any questions, call again. Okay. okay. <laughs> bye-bye. I will say okay like that again. Huh? Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, that is a problem for people to accept the fact that we spend one hour a week talking about 
who is murdered or who is ripped off or who is corrupt. But I don't. I get tired of reading in the newspaper that each story, major story, is a tip of the iceberg. It's getting so that if you go out floating in a boat, every piece of the water has an iceberg, and you got to clear them out some way. You're going to hit icebergs everywhere you go. And I could cite 30 major stories that if they were going to break, you know, the Vicki Morgan story, it would her friend. Uh, that it would break all of Hollywood open. There's another one, will DeLorean deliver Hollywood? And that's Johnny Carson and Ronald Reagan and, and the, all the powers that be. Uh, there's stories about Watergate, Jeff Gers wrote in 1972 in Sundance. This is the tip of the iceberg. Here's one more call. We'll take another one. Hello? Hi, Matt. Yes. Yeah, I was really getting annoyed this week seeing this news about Reagan shipping these troops and ships down to Central America and Nicaragua. Yeah. And I was wondering what you thought uh, was going to be going on down there in the future. Well, uh, how often do you listen to the program? Uh, every week. Well, I think they're going to have a war. How long ago have you listened every week for the last couple of years? Uh, I said when Ronald Reagan went to office, he wanted a war. He's there to make war. Right. So uh, what we're going to get is war. What you get on the surface are, are jelly beans and balloons. And what you get underneath is a mean man. He was mean in California. He was put in by mean people. He has no interest in anybody. He's totally narcissistic, he and Nancy. I mean, even apart from their own children. I read that his daughter's in a play up in Michigan, and they said, well, they don't want to come see her because they would upstage her get attention. They went to see their son at the ballet, and the ballet went on. They don't care about anybody. They don't see their grandchildren. How are they going to treat us when they treat each other so cruelly? You know, that's a sign of what these people are. And and I said in de it was December 8th, 1980, that they had to deliver the corpse of John Lennon before the war started. Right. He didn't want any war protests. You know, this is one reason a lot of people don't understand why I date these programs and number them in a sequential order. Because the date is important and what I said, uh, you know, going back to 1974, he'd be president of the United States. I think I was the first person in America to publish that. And nobody believed it. But I also said that he'd be the man that wanted war. He, he is going to go into Cuba. He's going to take care of Nicaragua and uh, uh, El Salvador. And he's got his boss in Guatemala. And there's too many Mexicans for him and William Colby. Remember when Colby said the biggest problem in the world isn't Soviet Russia, it's Mexicans? Yeah. And they were planning to kill 30 or 40 million of them. There were too many, remember? Mr. Ball and, and the Trilateral Commission? Yeah, I remember that on your show about, I don't know, four or five years ago. Four or five years ago. And uh, I don't see, you know, this is a, a community of Mexicans, Chicanos, Latin Americans, and I don't see them rushing to the station asking for help or either the Jews either. When you when you put on the air that they're shipping gas ovens to, for 400 people a day out of Florida, Argentina, do you see anyone knocking on the door? You know, who's the company? The, you know, the, the point is that, that what they're going to get in Central America is what he said he would do. Hitler said in Mein Kampf what he was going to do. Was he kidding? Yeah, well, it's like, you know, all the stuff you're saying was going to be happening now is happening. Yeah, well, it's not my problem that people can't function. It's only my business to interpret the news based upon not only what I see, but what they say. Yeah, well, it's really disgusting that people have been so lax that they've allowed it to come to this point. Well, I can't imagine anyone in California with an IQ over 40 who can't remember Ronald Reagan as governor. Mm -hmm. Unless the voting machines are rigged. Like in Italy, Benito Craxi of Lissio Jelly's P2, the people that stole $22 billion of gas tax and sent it to Argentina, involved with a Nazi coup, he gets elected in Italy and is going to run the government. Uh, work, he had the brown shirts, you know, work, Lissio Jelly, his boss, did with Mussolini. They had a memorial to Mussolini this week, you know, a big celebration. Uh, what do the Italians want? You know, they had a rerun, not a rerun, but a show this week on the anniversary of Watergate and the hearings, and uh, they showed the Watergate entry and what happened, described it, and then went on to say that Nixon won the election in November. 
They had from June to November to figure out what was happening, and he won by a landslide. Fifty percent didn't even vote. That's disgusting. So, I mean, evidently they liked Vietnam, and they liked Henry Kissinger because they didn't, you know, they didn't even bother to get out of bed and vote. Yeah, well, you know, they've really let it come to this point. Yeah. When I was watching these reports on TV, there's really some insulting propaganda. They claim that the war in El Salvador is being uh, coming from the Soviet Union and that the revolution in Nicaragua, they claim, came from the Soviet Union. Yeah, but that propaganda isn't anything new. That, it's up to the people. See, the people who watch that like it, and the people who don't like it aren't watching it, so they don't know what's going on. Well, I don't like it, and it really ticked me off. Now, well, what I was wondering is they always, they never give any evidence that there are like any Russians there or anything, but they always say they're using Soviet equipment, they're using Soviet guns. What I was wondering... Is, is it possible that this arms dealer, Monte Carlo, is his name Samuel Cummings? Samuel Cummings, yes. I was yes. wondering if you had any information if, like him... Or well, he's been people. buying Russian weapons and Viet North Vietnamese weapons. He buys anything and sells it. He, he's the brother-in-law of Senator John Tower of Texas. And Samuel Cummings is the largest gun merchant uh, dealer in the world and supplies Carlos and the terrorists and everybody else. But they buy Russian weapons, they buy North Vietnamese weapons, and Israel made like eight million or billion, I don't know what it was, sweeping up the PLO weapons, and now they're selling down in Honduras. So they'll say the PLO is funding the rebels in El Salvador, and they bought the weapons when they smashed their heads over there in Lebanon. Mm, I didn't know that the Israelis were selling the Central Americans Russian weapons. Oh, yeah, they're selling them the PLO weapons, the Russian weapons down there. That was one of the reasons that they were allowed to go in. You see, today Reagan just said the, those two butchers that came into the White House, he invites them in and, and says, oh, you can have anything you want. And they go home victorious, and he, they're going to arm, and then they'll dump all the PLO and Russian weapons down in Central America and say, see, here's the proof, here's the boat. So the Israelis are selling it to them, and you think that that Samuel Cummings is selling weapons in Central America? Samuel Cummings is selling anything. He, he is, you know, the master of selling. He supplied Edwin Wilson, who was working for George Bush. He's from the mainline Philadelphia CIA. He can, you know, they pick up all these Russian and Chinese, northern Chinese, North Korean PLO weapons, and they sprinkle them like rice at a wedding, you know? And they say, look what's happened here. You know, look what we found. And yet, if you read the newspapers, you know, uh, like the party that called me just before, if, if he wants to know, I'll show him the articles where Israel bought up those we recent weapons and made a fortune. They grabbed them for nothing. So what about John Tower? Uh, how's he involved with starting a war? Well, he's the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He was responsible in Texas of go King bringing in Marina Oswald, the spy from Minsk, Russia, with Lee Harvey Oswald. He's been a big wig of the Senate. He's head of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and his brother-in-law is over there in London, and his, his wife just uh, uh, stepped down from an appointed position that Ronald Reagan had of 60000 a year because she's going to help him run again for election. That old goat's been pumping weapons for as long as he's been around. That's his hobby. So this John Tower is For, one of the people that put Reagan in and starting American war in Central America is collaborating with the Israelis oh, and absolutely. Sam Cummings to sell them these Russian weapons to give them an excuse to go in there. Well, Samuel Cummings didn't have to sell those. They were in the caves or under these huge cases or tunnels in Lebanon, and Bashir Jamal makes a deal. Hey, you clean my backyard. I've got these these mucky people here and we'll give you all the weapons and you can have the share the the hashish that's growing because it's plantation time you know uh -huh. so in comes israel and lets the troops come in and they sweep up the weapons and then distribute them in central america and made money off of it so the people who are trying to get us into the war are the ones who are selling all the weapons down there anyway well that's always been the way zaharoff the famous Merchants, the book The Merchant of Death, History of Zaharoff, the Samuel Cummings saga, they sell both sides. 
and they sell anything that shoots, and they keep their profit, and preferably they'll, they'll send the right-wing leftist weapons so that they have an excuse to shoot more. Mm. Well, that's disgusting. So the people who are trying to get us into these things, the one they're stirring up, you know, it's hard for me to see, you know, from Vietnam, you know, how America started it because I was just a kid then. But yeah, well, you see it now. <laughs> yeah, and every time there's a murder covered up, you see how they covered Kennedy's assassination. That's right. Once, once you see how these high commissions work, when you see one, you've seen them all, like uh, Reagan said about redwood trees. Yeah, you've seen one, you've seen them all. <laughs> yeah, they wanted to preserve the redwood. So if you see one commission, you've seen them all, you know, <laughs> like the new commission on Central America. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, thanks for calling, and uh, keep your anger up. Write somebody, write letters to the editor. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Is anybody else angry? Remember the movie Network where he said, I've had enough. You know, he yelled out the window. He was, I'm not going to take it anymore. Well, Pat Echevsky was dead, and Mr. Finch was dead, and William Holden was dead. Three of the cast died uh, shortly afterwards. They don't have to take it anymore. Hello? Hello. Uh, yes. Uh, my wife and I listen to your program. And, uh, we listen to it every week. Good. <laughs> Well, how many letters to the editor do you ever send in? Do you have your local paper where you live? How many letters to the editor? I've got one on the desk. Well, how many do you mail away? See, I'm negligent, too. I'm going to start writing the Mallory Herald once a month. Let's all make a pledge. Everyone write a letter once or once every three weeks. How often do they take it from one person? You know, there's certain people, the Hiders used to write, and they were far right-wing birchers, and I think she felt she was unnum outnumbered after a while. That I haven't heard their letters or seen them for a long, long time. They used to be neighbors. But there used to be a bunch of people who would write in uh, their opinions. Now everyone sort of neutralized with no energy. Let, okay, I'll write a letter a month if you'll write a letter a month. Get a letter to the editor, write to college presidents and ask what classes they have or what... Uh, visiting lectures, who's there that would stimulate them? Uh, how do you get off the lethargy? And if there's somebody interesting, let us know and we'll put it on the air where they are. Or if there's somebody that's rotten, let us know. We can demonstrate. You know, we can show our feelings. Somebody has to wake up sometime. I don't know what. Or maybe just sleep through it all. I don't know. I, don't, I really can't imagine uh, um, what it's going to take to wake the people up anymore. I think they're 24-hour entertainment, and I don't think that uh, uh, they're sufficiently informed to get angry. Yeah, I know. See, we're very concerned about the Central Yeah. Well, tell more people. Call five people and tell them to listen to World Watchers, and then after they listen six or eight weeks, tell them to call five more people and turn people on. A lot of people don't even know we're talking about these things. You know, uh, turn people on to it. And uh, some people have discussion groups. They get the broadcast and have a tape and then once a week play it for one hour and sit and talk about it and see what books are suggested or articles and look them up and take an interest that way. Well, we enjoy your program a lot. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Okay. Well, we don't have time for any more calls. Long answers to that. There is a humming. We're going to have to do something about the board here. I forgot to ask Lori about that. The humming when the talk show is on, I've been told that it's terrible. And I suppose it is. I don't know what to do to help you uh, get that hum off. I'm not a mechanic at this edit. I'm so busy during the week looking up these conspiracies. I don't have time to uh, call about the hum. But maybe you can call Lori here at the station and tell her about the hum when the talk show is on. 375-3082. Call Kazoo. Tomorrow, and tell Lori she's here that when we listen to Mae Brussel and the talk show, uh, several people have said there's a hum on the air, and tell her about it. Maybe she doesn't know, you know, and uh, we can find out uh, the cause of it. We better not ask too many questions. It might cost a thousand dollars to get it fixed. That's the way the cookie crumbles around here. <laughs> Everything costs money, and the tower costs money, and the board costs money, but um, we do the best we can, right? 
Okay, I had one radio station back east. Oh, in Richmond, Virginia, wanted these programs, and they've been writing to me. And they said they didn't have the money, and I said chip in. And within a few minutes, they had nine dollars on the desk in order to broadcast, and that was neat. Okay, it's on the hour now, and we'll begin the uh, other part of the program, the World Watchers. <laughs> 